By now you've probably heard about the premise for the upcoming Sun and Moon anime, either from your most recent trailer, or the Kuro Kuro Leak, or this magazine. The Kuro Kuro Leak especially has been all over the internet, and the premise that it revealed to us, according to Kotaku, can be translated as Ash is going to school, is the start of a student's life that hasn't existed until now, is he aiming for graduation? Okay, it's funny because I actually just recently got into the whole school anime genre myself, but predictably not everyone in the United States reacted to the news positively, and I can kind of see why. Here in the United States, we associate the school setting with shows exclusively for little kids, like five-year-olds and like maybe eight-year-olds, for the most part. We see it as a restriction of independence, and especially in Pokemon's case, we see it as a sign that the show is trying to de-age itself. But things are a bit different in Japan. In fact, based on the Japanese tradition of school anime, Ash finally going to school after all these years actually means that he's going to grow up. Or at least, you know, have some sort of other character development, even if it's subtle. But yeah, I need to step back a little, because that's a pretty bold statement to make considering Ash's ridiculous face on this poster. Regardless, we do have to remember that even the X and Y series during the first episode, Ash was acting so childish it was cringeworthy, and like, not all of those qualities completely went away over the course of the X and Y series. So I don't think we should be really surprised when the first episode of Sun and Moon rolls around and Ash is being, well, Ash. I mean, it's pretty standard for the protagonist in a shonen style anime to have a bit of a childish streak to them, regardless of how old they're supposed to be. Besides, putting away his mandatory moments of goofiness. Now, I didn't really like this new art style at first myself, but if you look at this particular picture, he actually looks kind of older now. At least more so than before. KG Prestige's video brought to my attention that in the Pokemon anime, older characters, like Lan, for example, are usually portrayed of smaller eyes, so maybe that's what they were going for? Or some kind of halfway point between the kid eyes and the adult eyes? Of course, whether I like the change or not is not the immediate issue at the moment, because I'm just going with basic pattern recognition here. In the trailer, we also briefly see him confront Team Skull, and he looks pretty competent there too, so... We can expect him to be goofy from time to time because it, that's just how shonen anime works, but that doesn't mean he can't mature in his own way. Speaking of anime standards in Japan, let's talk about school anime. I highly doubt that Ash is going to be restricted to the same place for an extended period of time because they do want to show all of the islands in the game, don't they? Because like that's the whole point of the anime. Whether they do it by having a mobile classroom, or having a bunch of field trips, or letting students do their own thing on their own time, or even doing field classes like in Super Mystery Dungeon and in other action school anime. Either way, I hope that adventure is still a good element in the next series. In Japan, school is seen as a sort of rite of passage. Just passing the entrance exams and getting into a good high school is a pretty damn big deal. And yes, they have to pass entrance exams to get into high school. Forget college, shit gets real right about when you're just old enough to get drafted into the Hunger Games. But just calling the Japanese school system the examination hell that it's infamous for won't quite do complete justice to its role in a Japanese person's life. And why starving manga artists of all people still have such an astonishing level of fascination with it. School anime tends to revolve around a group of students. Oftentimes, it's a group of students from a school club. Sometimes, even a whole class. This reflects a very prominent aspect of not just school anime, but Japanese society in general. Harmony, community, relationships, and doing your part are all considered very important aspects of Japanese culture. Usually, this community is centered on the workplace, but for young people, it's school. New students are expected to make a formal introduction in front of the whole class. And when I say that, I don't mean they have to do it for every class period for a different group of students each time. This is because you'd only get one classroom and one group of classmates. Or at least one for elementary, one for junior high, and this actually even continues into high school. You can probably infer what this means for a friendship and duty-based culture like Japan just for as well as I can. These are the students that you're stuck with from the first day of school, 
and all through studying for the high school or college entrance exams. As for the duty aspect, the students are held responsible for keeping their room clean, but they are also responsible for each other. At least starting with junior high, any necessary leadership duties are given to the class representative. Very little is written about them in English on the internet, but based on what I could find, they often lead the formal greeting of the teacher when they come in and make sure that the cleaning at the end of the day is done properly. The way that the class representative is decided on seems to depend on the school. In at least one case, the class representative changes every day, so that all of the students get a chance to perform the duties. It may also be the student with the highest grades. Still over times, it's decided by election, or, quote, unless no one cared, in which case they were appointed by their homeroom teacher. As for more on the class representative's actual duties, if anime is to be believed, then in theory the class representative would also play a role in peacekeeping as well as trying to help the less sociable students open up or feel more comfortable in the group. However involved the class rep may or may not be, these duties are clearly not reserved for the class rep alone. Why don't you leave the poor kid alone already? Stop giving her such a hard time. Yeah. It's her first day. No wonder she's nervous. Yeah, it's okay. Don't worry. I thought her introduction was just fine. Thanks for the info. Speaking of which, let me introduce these two. Hmm? This one here. And I'm not just basing this on Glitter Force either. These kind of shenanigans actually happen pretty often in the anime. And as for an IRL source, gaining control of a classroom that is not the teacher's own is one of the challenges that Tofugu.com makes a point to inform English-speaking teachers about. In between classes, when the teachers move from room to room, the students have about 5 to 10 minutes to socialize while they wait. Of course, they do leave the room for classes that require facilities or equipment over at a desk and a chalkboard, such as for gym class or for musical instruments. Or in My Hero Academia's case, an over-the-top life-size model city for some over-the-top battle training. But more on that later. <laughs> While some Japanese schools do have cafeterias, this isn't always the case like it is in the West. Most students eat in the classroom, but during this time, students are also allowed to go anywhere else on school campus to pass the lunch hour including other classrooms where they might eat with neighborhood friends or friends from club. According to one of the references in my video description, between classes and at lunchtime classrooms can be noisy, lively places. But then even from this, after school ends it transforms into not just a place for class, but also the place for sports and other extracurricular clubs. And these clubs are a big deal. Even though these activities don't count for much on their resume, some students still even decide which high school to go to based on the clubs that are available. This is where students can either blow up steam, relax, be creative, and or perhaps even more importantly make friends. The club's activities are often student-managed and student-led, according to both IRL sources and as can be seen in anime. Much like a Japanese workplace, the social structure of clubs is based on seniority. Students rarely change clubs from year to year, and most clubs meet for about two hours after every school day. Many of them even meet on weekends and on Japan's already short school vacations. Club activities and meetups are only put on hold just before those all-important entrance exams for the seniors. Excluding any time just coming for a club, the Japanese school year consists of 240 days a year, which for comparison is 60 days more than their American counterparts. Though this time doesn't include time spent in clubs, which can be especially time-consuming for the sports club, these 240 days also include school festivals such as Culture Day and Sports Day, to just name some of the most widely practiced traditions. I don't know about anywhere else in the world, but in my experience as a North American, schools seem to become less and less involved in my life as I got older. But the reverse seems to be true for Japan. Elementary age kids in anime are most often de depicted in playgrounds and forests and basically anywhere else other than school. So after all of that, in short, school is a pretty big freaking deal. And not just for someone's grades either. The school and the clubs associated with them also play a huge role in growing up. And all of this no doubt plays a role in why school is such a common setting for anime. Even when it doesn't seem to make much sense to us. Now, keep in mind, what I'm about to say does not necessarily mean that all school anime is going to be good. I'm not trying to make excuses for bad anime here, because bad and sometimes even childish school anime does exist. 
But no matter how you feel about cliches, I cannot stress enough how important it is to recognize the differences between why some seemingly similar cliches exist in Japan versus the West. For Japan, the cliché exists for reasons that allow a much wider audience to enjoy it for what it is. It's a motif which to me as an American is surprisingly lively and diverse. There's the all-popular sports anime like Haikyuu Explanation Point or Baby Steps. The inevitable romance. There's also the critically acclaimed dramas that have become especially famous most recently. There's also the gag comedies with soft side to them like Nichijou. And then there is all kinds of supernatural batshit craziness. Even action. And yes, villains exist in school anime too. They're just not mandatory. Clubs are also a very common focus in school anime. Whether it's a music club preparing for their debut at the school festival, a sports club, a game design club, the host club, the search for supernatural stuff for fun only to almost end up bringing about the destruction of the earth club, or basically anything that's a good excuse for friends to get together and goof off, but also ideally better themselves in some way. As I've mentioned briefly before, like a lot of anime, the characters are often the main focus through all of whatever happens. Case in point, my primary example for today will be My Hero Academia. This one does feel more like a shonen than a traditional school anime. But I wanted to use it as my primary example because Pokemon has a bit of a shonen element to it as well. So this example could demonstrate just one of the many ways that genres can be mixed. And genres do get mixed around a lot in the so-called genre of school. By the way, shonen traditionally refers to anime that is aimed at a young male audience. Some of the staples of this kind of anime are action, adventure, and a male protagonist with a very difficult goal to achieve like... Becoming the strongest, finding the One Piece, becoming a god in more ways than one, becoming the very best like no one ever was, you get the picture. So back to My Hero Academia, or Boku no Hero Academia as it's known by the Japanese title. This anime takes place in a world where most of the population is born with unique superpowers, called quirks. Becoming a superhero is a legitimate profession, and the story takes place at the most prestigious hero school in the nation. At least starting with episode 5 it does. The structure of the show goes like this. We are first introduced to our protagonist Izuku, and we simultaneously witness a chaotic chain of events that help him get into the before-mentioned school. These extraordinary events occurred as he was roaming the streets in hope of seeing a hero fight a villain so that he can add to his notebook. He's apparently been taking notes like this since he was very young, to the point where going to check out a crime scene became a habit, which didn't even fail after he realized he had no chance of becoming a hero after all. Of course, this was before the chain of extraordinary events I was referring to earlier. Speckled in this introduction are emotional flashbacks and a scene in the classroom regarding what the students are going to do next in their lives. We also get introduced to his future rival, whom he used to admire as a younger child, but apparently he has now become a bully who, like, basically inherited Gary Oak's arrogance and Misty's explosive temper, times ten. They're not really his parents, obviously, but hey, could have fooled me. The first several episodes are actually focused on just getting into UA High School. For Izuku, this entails frantic physical training and a bit of soul searching, all culminating to the entrance exam where he does meet several of the people who will eventually become his classmates and friends as well. When he does get into the school, most of the screen time is dedicated to the hero training. Every day seems to have a hurdle that our heroes in training need to deal with. From mock fights and other interesting practice scenarios to an unfair surprise physical exam on the first day of school of high stakes. Things are kept interesting for the conflict between Izuku and his aggressive rival as well as Izuku's struggle to deal with his limits and learn to control his newfound abilities. There are larger issues at work too, but I'm not going to spoil all of those for you. But what we need to know right now is that it's an action anime first and foremost. The students are learning to become superheroes after all. Moments in My Hero Academia that truly feel like they are typical mundane school stuff are usually brief. When they do happen, they feel meaningful and serve to enhance the action portions of the plot through character development 
and the dramatic and emotionally charged action portions also give meaning to the more mundane parts of the anime. One example is Tenya, whom didn't respect Izuku at first, but came to respect him during the applied portion of the entrance exam. And through the first days of hero training, he came to respect Izuku to the extent that he voted for him to become class representative. But not long after that, Izuku ended up giving his position to Tenya after Tenya was able to calm the hysteria during a false security alarm. And then Tenya's first duty as class representative is to escape a dangerous situation in order to get the urgent message to the school that real villains have invaded campus. And the anime has not gotten much further than that. Oh yeah, the villains were taken care of, don't worry, you won't be left with that kind of cliffhanger. <laughs> but it is made very clear that this is only the beginning of a long and so far pretty interesting anime. Never a dull moment in a school full of kids with unique superpowers. This is an example of how the school elements actually added to the non-school elements of the plot. And vice versa. As cool as the often active hero training classes are in My Hero Academia, most school anime also takes more advantage of the time spent in between classes and clubs and on the often long walk to and from school. Oh yeah, did I mention that school buses don't exist in Japan? You have to either walk or ride a bike or take like public transportation. You can get your own ass to school, kids. <laughs> anyway, I digress. While I have no doubt that My Hero Academia is distinctly influenced by the Japanese perception of schooling, in this case for the better, this is just one expression of those influences. It would be misleading to base judgment on this kind of anime in particular based on one show. Whatever that show is. But I can't sit here all day, so instead I would highly recommend you at least browse through the 2015 and 2016 editions of Honeyfeed's recommendations for the school anime to watch, as well as Free Nightfall's list on MyAnimeList.net. It is admittedly a little strange for Pokemon to suddenly send its character to school when it's never been a quote, school anime before. But well, they have mixed up somehow, I guess. And I really do have my doubts as to whether we should even be calling school a genre in the first place. There are certainly things that they do have in common. But some of it is a little bit conflicting. One of the contributors to Honeyfeed describes the genre as the type of anime where anything can happen to our favorite characters, even the most unlikely things. End quote, that's, that's pretty accurate, but resuming the quote, mostly full of action, youth, passion, and or drama. End quote. And or, huh. Regardless, all in all, I'm actually pretty curious as to at least how the new Pokemon anime is going to fit into this distinctive motif. I mean, you seem to have villains established right off the bat featured prominently as early as the first trailer. The character bios that were recently released are interesting too. Most notably, some of the characters work at their family's business outside of school, which might be an opportunity for some interesting side plots. There's also Tapu Koko and the Z-Ring, and it's also been confirmed in a magazine that this is going to apparently be a quote, slapstick adventure. And the extended fourth trailer in particular kind of does just give the vibe that there might be a bit more to it than just comedy. In the past, Pokemon kind of already had a slice of life element to it, if you consider the filler of the past to be the everyday life in the Pokemon universe. It's just that the kind of experiences that are going to fill the protagonist's everyday life now is going to be very different. And to be honest, I just don't know how they can logically, physically do that without character development of some kind. Not to mention school usually inherently entails a step forward in an anime character's life. Villains, comedy, maybe adventure, definitely new experiences. This anime can go pretty much anywhere based on the premise. Maybe it could actually be pretty awesome. Perhaps refreshingly lighthearted compared to My Hero Academia. But it's all a matter of how they execute it. This contributor to Honeyfeed.com makes a pretty bold statement regarding school anime, saying, This is the kind of show which can reunite every fan of anime. Perhaps we should test that hypothesis and, you know, give school a chance. Not just Pokemon. Let's give school anime in general a chance. I think we can all at least agree on that much. What kind of school anime have you found that you really like? Be sure to let the rest of us know in the comment section. This is TJ, DJ Old Master, signing off. See you later!